Well, good morning, kitty. Just catwalks, please. You're a good kitty. It's a Sunday, and it's December 4th, and it's a pretty sky. What do you think about that sky, sweetie? It's pretty. Yeah. And welcome to the Please Subscribe Show. We invite you to join us. Shaggy, would you? That'd be great. Okay, I'm going to have a baby. Then they got the big airplane crash. Huh. So she's the one that gave birth to the baby, but then the other lady got the baby. Right. And she's the one that lost her leg. Oh, okay. This is a soap opera. This guy's got Grace Dad in his partner. Season 19. Never seen it. So I decided to go to Kohl's and they have pickle erasers. I thought this was interesting right here for an eraser. I don't know if your teacher would like it, but. This is interesting, a sink gnome. <laughs> That's kind of funny. For, for your chips. A pop up poop pen. Yeah, I read a whole novel with that. Oh, this is kind of cool. It's a Harry Potter wand wind. Excelsior. A dumbbell beer glass. Lindo, I need something like that. Huh. That is pretty good, though. No one, no one would think to look. If you're trying to hide something valuable, just put it in a soup can. Like anybody wants chicken soup. I was thinking of gifts that are going to be for eight and up. Because my son's about eight. Now this one actually says eight right here. And I don't know. I thought this one might be a good one. It's a radio car. Um, of course, it you know there have to be places. Um, I got him one when he was younger. And he really liked it. But this one's more uh, for when they're a little bit older. Probably going to go with this one. And I may look at a few other stuff. Batmobile actually is saying 15 and up. And that's probably because Batman still has some adult content. So we're probably going to hang off from that one. Uh, but there's only, always these things too, which are a lot of fun. Um, I know that the remote control thing would be a lot of fun, but that's probably something I would get, uh, you know, with him, you know, when we get past the whole supervised visits things. But this might be good because Star Wars is, is kind of a good story. 
And, uh, you know, I come from kind of a, a religious uh, background with my second wife. And I do think Star Wars does have some Christian elements because there is good and there is bad. So it does talk about good and bad and the reason for the good and bad, you know, because there's a dark force kind of thing. So it's not exactly the Bible per se, but one of the characters is named Luke. Um, so I don't know, I might, I might, I might go with this maybe. It's basically like a Lego, Darth Vader and uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It doesn't have Luke in it, but still it's a good story and you know, I think it might say something. I, I didn't have a lot of Star Wars when I was younger. I had a Millennium Falcon. Um, and I always remember the Millennium Falcon because it had a broken piece in it. And uh, I, you know, I always ask my dad, say, Dad, you know, could you return it? And uh, no, he said, it was like, you know, just play with it with the broken piece. So I had a kind of a broken Millennium Falcon, which is, it was just only missing one little piece by the, the gunner ship. Um, but it was still fun to have, and these probably always, these probably have all the pieces in them, so I could wrap this up, and this would be a good, I think this would be a good Christmas, Christmas present, Star Wars, you know, it's, it's a good story, so I'm gonna go with this one, this one's with Obi-Wan and Darth Vader, and I'll, I'll deliver this to, to my son, now I gotta find something for the girls. It seems like when I look at a lot of the toys, there always seems to be kind of a battle going on. You know, if you notice things like right here, these characters are kind of battling out. And then you have a T-Rex chasing, you know, the T-Rex is chasing somebody. Um, like war planes and, you know, I guess that's just the way it's always kind of been, you know? This constant war kind of going on. This one's actually interesting too right here. Some kind of mythic Thor. Uh, don't I didn't really keep up much with Thor, but Star Wars does ultimately, you know. I mean, Luke does want peace ultimately, you know. Um, he's he's not a really a fighting character, you know, or not not a whole lot, but he, he does have to eventually. I might go with this one. I don't know. This one doesn't look too much more peaceful either. If you look at this one right here. Like, hey, let's put all the toys together and then we'll have them all fight. But this has some interesting things. I'm going to look at it for a minute. Some aspects to it. So this is a Obi-Wan Kenobi versus Darth Vader battle. Um, it's very interesting in the New Hope because Obi-Wan surrenders but yet becomes a powerful uh, force for Luke's uh, struggle towards conquering the empire or at least not conquering the empire but at least fighting the empire back um it's an interesting story that obi-wan just kind of puts his wand down and surrenders to darth vader in a way and of course darth vader kills him but then he becomes a spirit and can watch over luke better that way so he knew obi-wan knew he was more powerful as a spirit than he was as a, uh, you know, as a, as a, as a fighting conqueror. So he chooses not to fight in that battle. It's a good move. And in a way, you know, war, mostly when it comes to things, uh, it's about when you fight. It's not about always if you can fight. It's about when you choose to fight. So there's a time and place sometimes for that. But you have to know when. It's not always with sabers. Sometimes it's with paperwork. I thought this one was kind of funny. Because you have crook ice. And crook cream. And then you have this cop running from the ice cream truck. As if ice cream is kind of the enemy in this or something. Um... There's some kind of psychology to this. I'm probably just going to go with the Star Wars thing. It's imaginative. It's probably uh, somewhat easy to build. It, it looks like something an eight-year-old would, would probably like. One thing I noticed here is this one called Creator, which is uh, seven years old and up. But it looks pretty interesting. It has a giraffe, uh, pink flamingo. I don't know. I don't know. It kind of 
of thinking of John Waters kind of thing. Um, then there's this one, which is actually a, probably a still. It's basically, basically a city. I don't know the price on it, but it's a, uh, a moon city or a lunar research base. It's kind of getting kind of Kubrick kind of thing. Um, that one's kind of a big one, though. Now, this kind of got my attention because it's from Discovery, and it's actually a solar-powered toy. Um, it's a solar-powered robotic, and it is ages 8 and up. Pretty interesting, because I know solar power is making its way, uh, you know, into the economy and things. This could be the one, and it's certainly unique, but I have to get a... Oh, you know what? And it's affordable. And it doesn't deal with a franchise either, and it doesn't end in wars. So this could be interesting. I think I'm going to go with this one. It's, it is eight and up. It's also neat because it's run by the sun. So it's a solar-powered toy. You don't have to worry about batteries. All you have to do is just be able to put it together and put it under the sun. Now, this is actually better right here. I just found this one. It was kind of a thing on the side. I kind of accidentally ran into it. My, my kids like dolls, but what's interesting about all these different babies is they're all marked at different prices, um, which is uh, very strange. It's called Mind to Love. All right, so the idea behind this toy, which is uh, Discovery, is basically engineering. So it's hands-on, and it's an engineering thing with 197 pieces. Uh, it talks about the history of dinosaurs and certain parts of their body used as uh, kind of like a solar panel, which I think they're trying to sell the product, but it's a possibility. It could have been true to regulate temperature, but this might be something. All right, so for toys, because toys can be important, going well, with a Discovery, which is a solar power robot. Frozen, which is Disney, and it's, there's a, they have a cell on it, and then Barbie, which is another franchise, which is another cell, so they're both on cell, so it's the Barbie, um, I guess, uh, uh, lifeguard, and then the, uh, the Anna, uh, from Disney Frozen. Well, I went ahead and did the uh, Christmas shopping. The only thing is, is that if I would have went over $50, then they would have gave me $10 in, in Kohl's cash, but you only have two weeks to use it. It's basically just like cash. But I was right under $50, so I didn't get the Kohl's cash. But I got two, you know, dolls. One Disney, Frozen, it's a good franchise. And the other one was Barbie. Sorry, my nose is kind of running. The Barbie one is, you know, it's, it's, it's I think it's, I, you know, a seven-year-old girl would appreciate that. And then uh, uh, the Frozen one, I guess I'll give to uh, to Gwendolyn. I'll have to I'll have to think about who gets the Frozen doll and who gets the Barbie. I may give the Barbie to Gwendolyn because uh, she's a little s smiley. And then I think uh, Elizabeth would probably appreciate the princess style of Frozen. That's not, it's not exactly a princess, but she kind of is. I guess she is a princess. But anyway, um, then of course the uh, solar, um, the solar uh, toy, the robot. I'll, I'll give the solar toy thing. It's like a basically like a robotic thing. I'll give that one to David. It's original. And, uh, we may vlog the wrapping of it. But anyway, that's that. Since I haven't really officially met Gwendolyn, I, uh, Gwendolyn left when she, her mom took Gwendolyn. I guess the mom took Gwendolyn when she was about, uh, I guess she was about th three months. So I've seen photos of her and she seems like she's smiling. So Barbie is kind of a happy thing and it's a Barbie on a surfboard. But then again, the reason I got Anna from, from Prince, uh, the, the, I mean, from Frozen, was because there were no really uh, accessories with it other than the actual, uh, I guess the costume of it. They're both kind of Barbie dolls in a way. Um, but I don't know. Um, I may go, since Elizabeth is older, I may give her the Barbie and then give Gwendolyn the Frozen doll. And maybe they can negotiate, you know, 
that later on if they want to trade toys or something like that. Sometimes girls negotiate those kinds of things. I think that's something they do. Um, and then, of course, David would get the uh, solar power robotic toy, you know, um, which I think is cool. The reason I, I got it, I was going to get the Lego thing for Star Wars, but I was looking at all the Star Wars things. It seems like they're all kind of fighting and their sabers and all this stuff. And I'm not against that. You know, I'm not against the fact that, you know, but this whole society is kind of based in war and we want to be careful in what we teach our children. Not that Star Wars is bad. And, uh, but, uh, you know, maybe, maybe they could find ways to do Star Wars more of like in a peaceful way, you know? You know I mean, how many Star Wars do you see where they're not actually fighting, you know? But anyway, um, I know that's kind of a crazy thought, but it is original, I would think. You know, a Star Wars that there's no battle sequences in it. You know, like a Star Wars about family or something like that. Anyway, regardless, uh, I went ahead and went with the solar power thing because I think uh, the mother really pushes the engineering thing on, on the kid. So, you know, he is kind of a, a thinker. And this is kind of a toy where... You know, you have to kind of put it together and think about it as you do it, I guess. You know, it's kind of like a a, a solar power toy says a whole lot, you know. I never had one when I was younger. I did have a solar power calculator, but it's just an interesting idea that you, you don't need batteries for the toy. I uh, just need the power of the sun. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, I I, I, I thought I, I, I got, I, I thought I spent a little less than I thought, thought I would. Because, you know, they say don't go over $70, but I know parents do. Um, and this is kind of a, a, a very unique uh, uh, story about a parent. Because I don't, I don't, because of, of my financial situation currently, I don't get to see my children like I would, like I would like to. And I know that'll change. Um, and I know it is changing soon. Um, but I also have to deal with the fact that I have to make a certain amount of money to battle uh, these people in court so that I can defend myself properly. Um, and I am going to call some names. So that day will come eventually here or after, you know, my life. Either it'll come one day where the judge will make the ultimate decision on who the parent is. Now, God in heaven, of course, is our father. We all know that. But there is a delegation that goes on uh, in our lives about parenthood. And parents see themselves as the ultimate power, right? Now, I, I notice when I'm driving around a lot, there's a thing called an amber alert that goes off. And I wanted to bring attention to a certain amber alert that happened. And it was, I'm not going to say any names, but it was of six children ranging from 1 to 11 years old and they all had the last name the same and the two that were uh, posted were also of the last name so it sounds like to me that that wasn't an Amber Alert but that could have been a family on the run okay and that scares me because I had to think well all of these people have all the same last name and you know, there could have been something that, that went on with the parents and then they went, you know, running on empty. If you've ever seen that movie with uh, River Phoenix, probably one of our best movies that's ever been made. Uh, and Jerd Hush, who now is in The Fablemans. Running on Empty is, is a very interesting movie because the family has to join together because of an incident of the family's past and they have to run from the government together as a family. It's, it's a powerful movie. And Judd Hirsch should have probably got an award for that. So should River. Because that, that movie was overlooked the, the year it came out. But it makes me think um, how grateful I am, you know, that I'm not in some kind of situation like that. Where you have a family of, I guess, would have been eight, six children and, and then two that are, that are running on an Amber Alert. So don't know that situation. And, and, you know, it's none of my business, really. But it, they do get released. And it makes me think uh, what was going on there. Because there's probably some judgment calls. Gossip can get a lot of people in trouble, too. So we have to watch what we say. 
but it's scary um, because of the holidays. It's scary to be a parent, you know, especially when you're driving around and the Amber Alert goes off and you immediately think of your kids, you know, you don't always think of the kids that are that are out there in their crazy life. Now, about Angel, and I'm not, I'm not going to hide anything, because I know that she wanted to write a book about her life. Or, um, she didn't have, like, the ideal uh, childhood growing up, and I don't think anybody has had the ideal childhood, but hers was very unique. And there's probably some of that in her. There's some drama in there that I think that she needs to experience because of her childhood. So, I don't know. We don't have the normal family. And I wasn't raised in a normal family. I was raised by divorced parents. Um, mom and dad were divorced at nine. So I know how difficult it can be in a divorce. And when I'm not ready to battle in court, um, because I want to make sure I'm able to find the family lawyer that I want to pay for. And I don't know if pro bono is going to give me the one that I'm looking for. So I'm not ready yet um, to, be, to, be, to be their current parent, but I am ready in the future. So I'm preparing to become their parent. Um, it's just taking quite a bit of time. Now, I'm still writing the short story, too. That's about the Dallas Children's Theater. Whenever I played the gander, I'm still writing that. And this is about seven minutes. So I'm trying to send all this up and clear the palette of the gallery and then get everything up through the editor and then send it to you. So really, this is kind of a story about a parent dealing with losing, I guess you could, you, I guess you could say custody, but you have to realize that I have never been to court over any of this and never been approached by anybody about it, if you know what I mean, when you deal with legalism. That's why I watch the words that I say. So... It's really, I don't agree with the fact that she left. And if you look at a story like Marriage Story with Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson, um, you're looking at a story that kind of glamorizes that whole situation and kind of ties it up in a nice little ribbon and says, you know, um, well, divorce is reasonable. It's a reasonable thing. Just go through it. All you have to do is just push these buttons and pay this price, you know. And I, I choose not to push those buttons. So she could come around maybe, or she could maybe send me a photo, or she could acknowledge my existence, and then we could start to speak. That's her decision. I cannot make her do anything. But I do not have to play the game that she lays out because I can choose to play my own game. Now, if they want to uh, grow up, okay, and they want to see who's the person in charge, I'm actually in charge. And the reason why is because God put the man in charge of the household. That goes back from biblical times. So it's not my decision. It's actually God's decision on why I'm in charge. Now, they probably find this humorous, but they'll learn it. And there'll be a day when possibly they'll be served. And when that day comes, then they will have to go forth. Or it could be a running on empty kind of thing. That's what I'm trying to avoid. Because I think at times the government is kind of out of control when it comes to family. But it's because there's an evil force out there. That's why I was looking at the Star Wars thing. And there's an evil force that's out there that wants to be controlling. They want to be the one in power. They want to be the one that's the parent. They want to be the one that's in charge. And boy, when it comes to children, that's whenever hell and high water is drawn. You know? That's whenever... You know, they get they get kind of militant. And that's what I want to stay away from. So when everyone calms down and they realize that there can be peace because that's what God ultimately wants, then we can start to talk and we can grow up. Because I have no problem with growing up and doing a sit down and having a talk outside of any type of legalism. Now, we go all the way back to John Bunyan in the 1660s when he wrote Pilgrim's Progress. And we, we talk about legality in that story. And we talk about, is that the choice that we make as a Christian? Absolutely, positively not. We learn that legality does not get us to heaven. So you cannot buy your way into heaven. You cannot get there any kind of legal reason, okay? 
You can only get there by believing that Jesus Christ is the Savior and the Lord of your life. And once you realize that, then you start to make decisions that the biological parents should be together and that they should be a family. But the evil forces will have to be stopped before people can come together as a, as a, as a family. So, the, you know, the enemy is tricky. So we have to realize, well how, well, how am I going to overcome these forces? And the best way to do it is in a peaceful way. So I choose not to fight. Sorry. And Merry Christmas. So cookie dough bliss does look like something good, but because of the fact that my stomach hurts so much from eating cookie dough, just, you know, around Thanksgiving time, I'm kind of mad at cookie dough right now. So this possibly could spark my interest in a possible vlog. Uh, kind of looking for a charging cable. Uh, Cause I'm you know, taking like some time out to write this, you know, this thing about the Dallas Children's Theater and this experience I had playing the gander in Charlotte's Web. I thought about maybe going in here. I'll see if I, you know, if I see what's interesting, we'll, we'll, we might make it a vlog. We'll see right here. Then I'll probably head back to Whole Foods and walk around and sample uh, pineapple. Let's look at these little lights because I have one that I use to kind of work on. I turn it on. Oh my goodness. They're pretty bright. This one actually is way brighter though. Whoa. Thank mm -hmm. you.